Good morning, Transform. We've been sitting down for a while. Why don't you stand up and just shake it off? I'm going to refrain from singing, even though I've been granted the Britney Spears mic. <laughs> shake it up, shake it up. Just turn around and, I don't know, greet someone, say hello, give them a hug, kiss, depending on the status of the relationship. You've got 20 seconds to say something nice to someone. All right, five, three, two, one. If you could kindly take your seats, that would be really helpful. So I am privileged to be here this morning. I've been here every year since I was born, um, but I'm still privileged to be here. And what I really feel is on God's heart for this morning and for this whole week is this call, and we've heard it last night and we've heard it this morning, this call of God on our lives to say yes to Jesus and to say yes to the power of the gospel and to say yes to sharing that power of the gospel. So this morning, that's what I'm going to be um, just sharing about, my testimony of saying yes, where that came from, what it looks like for me now. And we know that the heart of Jesus is to be in relationship with all of his people. And it was shared this morning by Richard, but it's not about strategy so much as about culture. And in the same way, I don't believe it's about method um, alone, but I believe it's also about power. And I believe that if we go around teaching method and not power, then we end up with a lot of people trying to make something happen that isn't going to work. It's about the Holy Spirit's power. And it's about saying yes to that power. And I have the privilege this morning, ladies and gentlemen, of introducing to you one such man who has said yes to Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Paul Rain. I'm just going to ask you some questions. Okay. So, Paul, I met you, was it the beginning of last year, approximately? That's right. That's is, on. is it on? Hello? Yeah, yeah. wonderful. And um, I would just like you to give us a bit of a, a picture of what your life used to look like and maybe what it looks like now that you've had a, a relationship with Jesus, a change in that. Well, I think Jesus has given me much more of a confidence to share the gospel with people, uh, much more so than I had before. Oh. Um, before I'm, I'm, a sort of a, I'm an ordinary sort of person. My name's not Scott or Richard. I'm just ordinary. Um, <laughs> I prefer to sit in front of the computer screens looking at spreadsheets rather than talking to people. Um, that's, that's me. Um, but God got hold of my life and has taken away the fear of speaking to people about Jesus. And it's been good to do that. Wonderful. So could you tell us a little bit about um, what your thought process was when you were kind of confronted with this idea of talking to people out and about? originally? Fear, basically. Not, not, not knowing what to say, um, being you know, quite frightened to make, a, make, make some sort of confrontation or introduction. Um, I think what, what really melted me was having this sort of revelation of Jesus' love for me. Mm. I once had a picture of uh, uh, me carrying a cross and Jesus came and I was going to be executed. And Jesus came and took that cross from my back. Wow. And in turn, he gave me his clothes. Wow. And then he went to die in my place. Mm. And that sort of love that Jesus has for me sort of melted me so much. <laughs> and what he's done for me, you know, means I can do anything for him. Amazing. So when I first met Paul, he was very reluctant to go out and speak to people that he didn't know on the streets. And um, we did that as a group uh, last February. We started to go out together and just speak to people, pray for people, offer prayer. Um, and so, Paul, you've had a really interesting time, I understand, since that time. Um, and I'd just like you to maybe share a couple of stories that you've um, experienced recently. I was with yesterday. Yesterday morning was an amazing day for me. Absolutely amazing. This morning, yesterday morning. Um, I went for a walk with my dog, as I often do. And uh, going, going through the woods, I was having a marvellous time singing in the spirit out loud. <laughs> and no one could hear me, hopefully. <laughs> I was out of earshot. 
a really great time. And then I carried on walking around. I came back to the shopping center. I spoke to one guy sitting at the shopping center. And he was very affable and British and very kind, but wasn't really interested in me talking to him. <laughs> and then I started to come home. And as I walked over the footbridge, uh, by the, sitting at uh, one end of the footbridge, was a, a man about 30-ish. And he was just standing there as if he was waiting for someone to meet somebody. He had a phone in his hand. Um, as if he was about to meet somebody. So I went up to him. I felt I had to speak to him. I felt prompted by the Spirit of God to speak to him. And I went up to him and said, excuse me, can I ask you a few questions? Yes. He said, I'm a, I'm a Christian. What can God do for you today? What, what sort of miracle do you want in your life? He looked at me and thought for a second. He, he said, Freedom. Oh, yeah. Freedom to do what? Well, freedom to do anything. Interesting question. <laughs> so uh, I said, well, can I just pray for that for you? I said, okay. I prayed a sort of prayer that, Lord, deliver this man from fear, from all those constraints in his life which, and all those circumstances which stop him being free. Mm. And he said, okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask another question? I said, what's the best gift that God can give you? So he looked at me and said, well, life or children? I said, it's even better than that. It's eternal life. Because Jesus has died for you yeah. so you can be forgiven, so you can have eternal life. And he looked, he looked at me and said, well, he started explaining a bit about his background how he had a sort of nominal Christian background and now he's gone off the rails and done all sorts of things. And then his girlfriend had died in an accident and that made him start thinking about things. So I said, well, Jesus can give you complete forgiveness for all the things you've done. Would you like to pray a prayer with me right now? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, Heavenly Father, repeated after me. Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus to this earth. Thank you that through Jesus' death and resurrection, we can have eternal life and forgiveness. Wow. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> it was a simple prayer. Straightforward prayer. He prayed after me. Mm. And then sort of like they looked, at me, looked at me in misty eyes and looked at me and said, you're an angel. <laughs> <laughs> My wife can tell me that's not true. <laughs> I said to him, no, I'm not just a man telling you the word of God, a message from God. And uh, we exchanged phone numbers. I hope they get in contact with him next week when we get back. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's been a while, Is there anything else you'd like to share? So we can have confidence in the power of the gospel and talk to people. It's not just for the superstars, it's for people like you and me to mm. break down the walls and just share the gospel with people. Mm. They're more ready to hear them than we are to tell. <laughs> They're more ready to hear than we are to tell. That's so let's, let's do it. And one, 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 one more thing. Um, <laughs> I've just prayed a basic salvation prayer as I prayed with this guy yesterday. Anyone here? If you yet to say, pray that basic salvation prayer and yet to know you have eternal life, then the invitation is open. Mm. Come, to, come to the front at the end. We'd love to pray with you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Paul. That's great. You know, I've had so much fun traveling around, speaking in different churches, doing schools, whatever. Um, but it's been so cool because I've met so many people who've started out saying, it's fine for you, you're charismatic, it's fine for you, you've seen your blonde hair, it's fine for you, you've seen your personality. Of course people want to listen to you, of course people want to sit and chat to you, of course people will respond. And then 
we, take, we go out together and start talking to people, and people come back and they're like, oh, so I did have a conversation with someone today. And they come back the next week, oh, so yeah, I have, you know, prayed with some people on the street. Next week, oh, uh, Emily, I've started to pray for people on the street, and I've started to see healing, but it's really not enough. You know, I really want to see them healed and coming to church and be part of the family. And so the adventure of saying yes to Jesus is so much more than we could ever ask or imagine. And what was really cool about um, Anne and Paul's story was that they started out not wanting to speak to anybody and that not being their lifestyle and now Paul goes out most weeks at least once a week just to go to Tesco and see who's there sit on a bench see who approaches him and he's prayed for so many that there are some young people in his town now who approach him calling him the miracle man (laughs) are you the miracle man And this week, um, when I called him to ask if he would do this, this week, Anne told me that he'd seen some of the young people again who he'd prayed for previously, and they approached him, and one of them has got Crohn's disease. And Paul asked, how are you doing with that? And he said, not very well. I've actually had a bad patch, and I've been in hospital, I think. Is that what he said? Been in hospital recently, yeah? Um, And he said, but I thought um, that you should know, Paul, that um, I've started doing an alpha course. And then he said, and Paul you'll be the first person I tell when I give my life to Jesus. <laughs> so, ordinary people say yes to Jesus. I believe that this is what Jesus is asking for this week. And for some of you, I know that for you, your yes was even coming to Transform or coming to this meeting. And what happened for me was I used to be somebody who was very, very um, busy. I was a social worker, still am, um, but liked to help people a lot. And I thought I had to make something happen. And when I was um, abroad, I was in Australia for a time just with the Lord. And God revealed his love to me in one moment in such a way that I felt like I was getting married. That was the intensity of the love that I was experiencing on a, on a personal level that I started to cry and started to laugh and say, I'm getting married. And since then, people who know me and live with me and work with me, me have had to put up with spontaneous crying, laughter. This week I actually left work um, because I'm going back to Brisbane in a couple of weeks and some friends and I went out for lunch and they said, Emily, the lasting memory that we'll have of you, other than that time you prayed for me, other than that time you prophesied over me, other than that time this and the other, they said, is that you just, you just giggle, you just giggle at nothing. You're in a social work environment where there's a lot of chaos going on, but they say, but you'll just be at your desk and you just start to laugh and we know it's just that Jesus thing. We know it's just that Jesus thing. And for me, you know, I can be so interrupted at any stage in my life by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in a way that reminds me of who he is and of who I am. And actually, I'm not somebody who goes around and tells people what to do. I'm somebody who's got a relationship with Jesus Christ. And all of my stories come out of the overflow of a love relationship with him. So I don't have complicated things to say. I'm not clever. I'm somebody who's just got a hold of the Holy Spirit and wants to allow the power of the Holy Spirit in me out. You know, we used to sing that song, um, Jesus is knocking, patiently waiting. Do that one? Outside your heart's closed door. And the idea is that before we say yes to Jesus, he's knocking on the heart of each person in the world. But I've discovered something recently, and it's that With Christians, we've already answered to the knock of, can I come in? And it's time to answer to the new knock, which is, can I come out? Can I come out? I am not the source of anything that happens. I've prophesied over so many people in this last year who don't know God. I've seen amazing people healed. Two weeks ago, um, a lady came into my office who I worked with one year ago. One year ago, I was in the car going to a visit with her, and she um, was talking to me about her family. She was saying, I'm actually a bit upset at the moment because my mum lives in the Philippines, and I can't go and see her. And I said, oh, why is that? And she said, because I'm so terrified of flying. So I said, as you do, well, let me just pray for you because God can heal that fear. And she's like, in the car, so what what can she do? So, okay, okay. So I said, well, in the name of Jesus, I pray for peace in this situation, that you'd have no more fear of flying, that nothing would stop you from getting to your family. So she walked in the office last month, and she came and sat right next to me. She said, I've got something to tell you. And um, she said, my mom got so sick this year that I knew that I had to go and see her, because I didn't know when I'd be able to go and see her again. And she said, and I thought about what you prayed, and when I considered getting on a flight, there was no fear in me. And I went to the Philippines, and I saw my mom. And I was able to spend time with my family. She said, thank you for praying. You know, and in that moment, she was so timid about accepting prayer. You know, in my head, 
she, I'm thinking, what, what's really going on here? But I, I didn't know what was going to happen. You can't see the fruit automatically, necessarily at the time when it, when it happens. I don't know what's going to happen. She's saying, okay, yes, you can pray. I'm going, don't believe me, just watch. And the next year... She's coming to me and saying, I got on a flight. And so you never know really what's going to happen with relationship with Jesus. But when you say yes to Jesus, everything becomes possible, just as Scott was sharing. Everything becomes possible when we say yes to Jesus. Who's ever been on a third world mission trip? Lots of people in this room for sure. Well, last year I had the privilege of going to India. Uh, No, Kenya, wrong trip. Kenya, Mm. thank you, Lord. Um, Kenya with Vic. Who's ever come across Vic Gledhill from Warsaw? Okay, I'll tell you a story. Breakfast, morning one. There's six of us there, including Vic and his wife, Mama Jin. And we're sitting around, and we're having breakfast, tomatoes on bread or whatever it is. And Hannah, my friend who um, I was there with, she said, Vic, um, can I just ask what it is that we're doing here in Kenya? So you know what Vic's like, yes, girls, come on, get your things. Just put your money in. We'll go. We'll go. I'll tell you more details when we get there, you know. So anyway, sitting at the table, Hannah says, Vic, what are we actually doing here? Vic carries on eating his tomatoes and bread, hardly looks up. Yes, well, every child is born into a world of sickness, prospects and future of death, of sickness, lack of education. Hideous poverty, families who don't know Christ, families who know war, families who know killing, no real hope of a future, many dying too young, Satan roaring like a lion at the door of every child's life, Satan coming to do what he does best, to rob and kill and destroy, until He is interrupted. And we are the interrupters. (laughs) Uh, Thank you, Jesus. I do not have to do anything to know what it is to be equipped to go to a third world country to go and interrupt the plans of the enemy in somebody's life. What I have to do is say yes. What I have to do is say, yes, I'll come. Yes, I'll pray. Yes, I'll be there. Yes, I'll dance with children who've never seen a white person. Yes, I'll say, buenas a few tena, to get all the African people shouting hallelujah, whatever it is. But I have not got any medical equipment. I have not got any understanding of what they've been through. But I have a calling on my life to be an interrupter in the lives of people. And what qualifies me for that is my yes to Jesus Christ. And I can tell you that when he overwhelmed me with his love, it changed the way I thought about what I was able to do. It changed the way I thought about what I was able to bring into people's lives. And instead of this attitude that said, I've got to make something happen, I need to do X, Y, and Z, I go around going, yes, so um, the, the guy who created the universe, I was just chatting with him this morning, and he said, go, oh, by the way, I'll come with you. And he said, oh, let's go to work. And by the way, I'll come with you. And when you pray, I'll be there. Because guess what? It wasn't your idea to pray in the first place. That's my idea. It wasn't your idea to heal. It wasn't your idea to prophesy. You don't have to make anything happen. That river of living water wants to flow through you. And so when that colleague comes to you and says, I've got a headache, migraine, can't get on a flight, whatever it is. You know, often now, they, they would come to me and just put their arm out. <laughs> there, love. There, Bab. <laughs> Birmingham. So they would just come up to me and be like, oh, yeah. Last week, another girl came in who I worked with last year. She was just visiting. And she sat there. She's like, oh, has anyone got paracetamol? And then she went, whoa, Emily, come and lay hands. <laughs> so good. <laughs> just because, of, you know, the, the culture changing is what we're talking about, isn't it? We're talking about culture changing because of what we carry. And all I've done is said yes. I haven't got in there with models and methods and theories. But on the way to work in the morning in the car, I'll often just start prophesying over my day. And I'll say, thank you, God, for miracles, for opportunities. Thank you, Lord, for conversations that change culture, that change lives. Thank you, Jesus, that when I walk in, you walk in. The other day, I've, I know I've shared this recently. We were in a coffee shop about a month ago, a few of us from worship team. And we got into Starbucks. And we were just chatting to the girl, and I really felt compassion for her. So I was like, God, I really want to do something for her. Just decided to speak to her. She was on a break, went outside. I went to sit with her. And I said, "Um, 
I know this might sound strange, but we're Christians, and I just feel like um, God's got something for you. Is it all right if I just share it? And she said, uh, it's a bit funny, but yeah, I guess you can. I thought, you don't know how funny it is. I've got nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go in faith, because he comes with me. So I sat down with her, started to chat, and as I started to pray for her, the Holy Spirit did reveal specific things about what was going on with her family. And it was very moving for us both, to be honest, to be able to share that moment. And I tell you what, it's just about saying yes. And this week, we have an opportunity to say yes. We have an opportunity to say yes to being equipped and being trained. We have an opportunity to say, yes, I'm going to go and share the gospel with Jesus, about Jesus with people. We have an opportunity to say, yes, I will pray. Yes, I will stop for the one. Yes, I will prophesy. But if you don't know where to start, can I ask you to say yes to being overwhelmed by the goodness and the love of God for you personally this week? Because I know that when we have that revelation of his love and who he is and of who we are in him, that changes everything. And suddenly it's not about how do I anymore, it's about who's with me. It's not about how do I pray, it's about saying, I just want to pray for you. Can I just, let me just, because you've heard it, you know, and I... I really believe that a lot of the time we're much more educated than we are activated. So it's my heart to see us activated in these things. And it's my heart not to go on for much longer because it's time to stop. So what I'm going to do is I would love for you to stand. I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to ask God to reveal what it is that he wants you to say yes to this week. So that you know from God, where are we going, God? What have you got for me this week? Is it a call from God to be equipped and trained? Is it a call from God to say yes to sharing the gospel? in your workplace like I've been doing? Is it a call just to say yes to Jesus every morning? I'm going to go to Tesco and see what happens. Paul Rain, miracle man. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. But I'm going to pray and ask God to move. So Holy Spirit, we say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that it's your idea for us to share your gospel and not our own. Thank you, Father, that you are a good God who is for us. Thank you that you are a good God who designed relationship and designed family and designed it that we would be your sons and daughters. And Lord, I say thank you that you sent your son as your plan for saving this earth. But I say thank you, God, even more that you choose to still send your son and you still send your daughters to a world who is dying. And today, right now, Lord, I say thank you that you are with us, and thank you that it is your desire to equip us and train us. And Lord, this morning we want to say yes to you. Lord, I say thank you this week for healed backs. I say thank you this week for opening blind eyes. Thank you this week for opening deaf ears. But more than that, Lord, I say thank you that you will do above and beyond all we can ask or imagine this week and beyond, that we would see cities transformed, that we would see the UK transformed, because when we walked in, Jesus walked in, and when we prayed, Jesus prayed and when we stopped for somebody the Holy Spirit stopped for somebody and we were interrupting the plans of the enemy and bringing heaven to earth Lord I ask this week Father would you reveal your love in such a way that it casts out fear Lord I ask this week would you reveal your love in such a way that we know who we are and we know what we're called to and it becomes easy and it becomes a joy and a delight to do so Lord I ask that when we meet people we would see Jesus in them Lord, I pray for each person standing here today that you would deposit something in their heart that you want them to say yes to, that they would know what it is that you're calling them to do. And I just feel for some of us this week, it is about just saying yes to the relationship with Jesus Christ and doing that now. Jesus, we want to say yes to the relationship with you. And for some of you, it's like you've been in a marriage with Jesus without the intimacy. And God wants to continue to reveal his love to you. And if you need to say yes to continuing to know and experience the love of God, then just say yes in your heart to God now. And for some of you, you know that you want to be bold and you want to be courageous, but you don't know how. And the Holy, Holy Spirit is saying, I am here to help you. And we say yes to that Holy Spirit. We say yes to being equipped and trained. This week, oh God, would you go before us and would you do exceedingly abundantly all that we could ask, above all that we could ask or imagine. In the name of Jesus, amen.